If you have your Bibles with you, uh, grab your Bibles right now and go with me uh, to Matthew chapter 5. We're going to look just at a uh, couple of verses there and then we're going to uh, go to a couple of uh, uh, um, things that I believe we need to apply. And today I'm going to do something completely different. What I want you to do is if you have your phone, you can take your phone out and uh, you're going to take some notes. And uh, if you got a pen, grab your pen, take some notes. Because the way that we're going to do this today is I'm going to kind of uh, very practically work our way through this. This honestly, uh, the end and the beginning of the year is probably, not probably, it is uh, my favorite time of the year. And uh, the reason it is my favorite time of the year is because it, it, I feel that we all can get a fresh start. How many of you love fresh starts? And I think sometimes we just need fresh starts, right? And so uh, as we begin this year, I'm just going to title it the next couple of weeks or three weeks, however long we're going to do it. I'm going to call this The Climb. Somebody say The Climb. And I want you to note with me, I'm reading out of the message paraphrase in Matthew chapter 5. And I want you to listen to what Jesus said. So we're going to uh, kind of read this and then we're going to kind of practically work our way through this. And uh, I'm really asking the Holy Spirit to help us because we're going to ask some questions of ourselves and, and kind of uh, uh, evaluate where we are. How many of you know that it is important to evaluate where you've been and it's important to evaluate where you're going? Uh, I, I think that any person with, with any kind of sense, and especially when it comes to our spiritual sense, we really want to know where we are going. And look at Matthew 5, and uh, it will be on the overhead, and uh, it's out of the message paraphrase and, it, uh, paraphrase, and it says this. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Somebody say, climbed a hillside. And then I want you to notice the next phrase. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. I want us to read that together. Can we read that phrase together? Starting with those. One, two, three. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. Now... I believe that the, the theme for us for this year, because every, every year we have a theme, and the theme for this year is called Deeply Rooted. Deeply Rooted. And the reason for that is because I believe that without us having deep roots, uh, we find ourselves falling for everything or falling for anything or falling for wrong things. And some people are not rooted enough. They, they don't really understand what it is that they believe and why it is that they believe it. And so when somebody comes with some idea that sounds good, how I many of you know everything that sounds good might not be good? And so when it sounds good, it draws people away from the truth that there is in Christ Jesus. And you and I must be rooted in the truth of who He is. And so uh, we find that Matthew writes this, and, and uh, I love the way that Eugene Peterson puts this. He puts this that P Jesus climbing, he sees the crowd, and then he climbs up the hill. He goes up the hill, and then not everybody goes with him, but there are people that are apprenticed to him, meaning his disciples, uh, the, the committed ones. They climb with him. Now, the purpose for us is we have to purpose one thing, and, and that we must be the climbing companions of Jesus. How many of you know if Jesus climbs, you ought to climb? And I believe that what we need to do is ask ourselves, so just in a moment, let's ask ourselves some questions here as we kind of practically work our way through this. Ask yourself, who am I following? Who am I following? Very simple. I know we make a, a, a broad line statements of, well, we're following Jesus. Well, but really, are you following Jesus? Because if you're following Jesus, you will be committed to Jesus, but not only you'll be committed to Jesus, you'll be reflecting Jesus. So the question is this, am I an apprentice of Jesus or am I simply a distant admirer of Him? Am I truly following Jesus or am I, am I just in admiring? Okay, Jesus, I know who He is, I kind of believe that, but it's kind of a distant following. It is not truly an intimate following. And the question is, well, how do I know if I'm intimately following Him? How, how do I know the difference between me just being a casual observer and me being an intimate follower? Well, it's the word commitment, but it's also the word climbing. Here's the thing, are you climbing? Meaning what? Is there effort involved in your pursuing of Jesus? If there's no effort involved, and if there's no plan involved, and if you're not doing, and if, there's, if you don't put anything in, then you are truly only admiring from a distance. It is impossible to follow Jesus and not feel the strain of the climb. Because what you are doing, you are climbing against the very culture in which you live. 
You are swimming upstream. I don't know if you've ever been uh, 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 swimming or ever been uh, white river rafting or anything like that. How many of you know when you jump in a river and the current goes, you just go with the current? Have you ever swam against the current? Anybody? If you swim against the current, how many of you know it takes a lot of effort? It takes a lot of strain. And so when we have to understand our culture is going in one direction, but the kingdom culture is going in the opposite direction, and there will be a clash. So there will be, there will be a, you will feel the weight of it. And if you don't feel the weight of it, then you are just following culture. You are not standing against culture. Following Jesus means I'm committed to Him and to the process that He desires to take me through. See, for many of us, uh, we, we, we make commitments towards the, the beginning of a year, and we say, well, okay, you know, we're going to do this, and, and, and we call them New Year's resolutions. I hate New Year's resolutions because, you know, we're not very resolute when we make resolutions. Uh, those resolutions are gone by the third week of January. Are you with me? You know, we promise ourselves, I will never even touch another piece of chocolate cake. I won't even look at it. But come the end of January, say, well, it's the Super Bowl. I need to have cake. Are you with me, somebody? So this is not about a making resolutions. This is about a fundamental change in who we are, a change in our character, a change in our approach, and a change in where we are going. Climbing with Jesus means, what does it mean? It means being taught by Jesus. If you look at your life, let's ask ourselves this question. Let's all do this. If you look at your life, is it a reflection of being taught by Jesus or a reflection that you are self-taught? So if you look at your life, if you look at where you are, if you look at what you've experienced, would you say, if somebody were to look at you, would they say, that person has been taught by Christ? Or would they say, well, I mean, they have glimpses of Jesus, but honestly, they do not really have a, even a close resemblance of Jesus. And if you don't have a close resemblance of Jesus, it's because here's what you're doing. You are believing your words more than you're believing the words of Christ. Wow. And that, that comes down to, to the very core of, of there is, it's impossible to move forward. It's impossible to go to that next place. Everybody wants to grow spiritually, but nobody wants to pay the price for spiritual growth. It's like everybody wants to, to have something, but we want something with no effort. We want the prize without the price. You cannot get to the image unless you're willing to lay down your own image. And there is an image that is being upheld by the world telling us this is the way we ought to be. This is the, the, the way we ought to, ought to live. This is what you must drive. This is where you must live. This is how you must respond. And that image is being portrayed daily. And, and, and we all know that, you know, so people are, are striving to get there, but they never get there. It's because the fact of the matter is it is a false image. And you and I, we, you and I are living in a culture that are playing the music and telling us to bow down to an image that is created by man, not by God. Jesus is the very image of God on earth. He was the very expression. The Bible tells us when we see Jesus, we see God the Father. And so God's plan for you, if you are born again, if you are a, a child of God, if you are confessing Christ, then God takes you through a process of making you look more like Jesus. So every arena in your life that is not reflecting or looking like Jesus, God is going to work you through a process until it looks like Jesus. Yes. Climbing is a strenuous endeavor. Let me just ask, is there any climbers in the room? Anybody that's climbed anything, a mountain, a hill, a tree? I mean, any Zacchaeus is here? I mean, I ain't raising my hand for nothing this morning. I, I won't pick on you. You won't have to come and tell us. But any climbers? Yeah, just, I, I see some climbers. Some of you are lying now, but it, it's okay. The <laughs> last thing you climbed was in your car. That's the only climbing you've done. But let's just be honest. Climbing is a strenuous endeavor. Now, hang with me. To climb is to go uphill all the time. If you're not going uphill, then you are not climbing. Climbing takes effort. The tougher the climb, the longer it takes. The tougher the climb, the more preparation is needed. Certain climbs 
takes years of preparation, sacrifice, and resources. If you were going to climb Mount Everest, how many of you know you don't decide today and then get on a plane and fly and go climb Mount Everest? It will take you years, a minimum of 10 to 15 years to prepare in order to climb that kind of mountain. Because you don't mess with mountains that you're not ready to mess with. So if you are going to become what you need to become, you need to understand that you are going to have to start somewhere, but you're going to have to start and you're going to have to measure your life in comparison not to anybody else because we love to do that. We love to look at others and say, well, at least I'm further along than Shirley is. At least I'm further. And, and here's what we do. We take the person we know that's on the lowest count. Help me out, church. On the lowest denominator. Well, I'm better than John Benson. Well, everybody is better than John Benson. I mean, come on. Ask Michelle. She'll tell you. He's the only guy I can kid with like that. He won't write me an email. But the tougher the climb, the more the preparation. The tougher the climb, the more important is your equipment. The tougher the climb, the more important is your trainer. The tougher the climb, the more important is your companions. You never want to climb with fools because you're not going to get anywhere. The higher you climb, the thinner the air. Do you feel it? You're not even climbing yet. Let me make another statement. The higher the climb, the fewer the companions. Let me tell you why people stop growing, and let me tell you why you stop growing. And here is a fact. The reason we stop growing is because we get to a place that we are unwilling to pay the price for the next level of growth. The greatest challenge to your growth is your previous growth. Because once we've grown to a certain place, we feel, well, I've accomplished something. Now I can just relax. It is the biggest killer of leaders, especially leaders in spiritual environments, where they no longer pursued, when they were younger, they pursued and kept on pursuing God and the things of God because they were desperate for God. But we get to a place where now God has given, given us some levels of, of, of success in certain arenas, and now we feel that we've arrived. And what we don't understand, you'll never arrive on this side of eternity. So therefore, what happens is, why, why don't you grow in certain ways? Why don't you grow in your finance? Can I tell you why? Because there are certain things you will not do when it comes to your finance. Yeah. There are certain prices you won't pay. Why, why are you not growing in, 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 in your knowledge of the word and your knowledge of the truth? Because you, you're unwilling to put the time in to actually get to know what God's word really says. You're unwilling to take a time and a moment of your day and set it aside so that is the side of seeking the Lord. And then if you've done that, you're unwilling to increase that. You see, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church, but it's the truth. The, the, it, 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 whatever you sow is what you will reap. You can't sit in front of a computer all day long looking at everything else but not using it in order to say, what can I do and what is my plan for my growth because I am climbing? The higher you climb, the greater the pain. If you don't feel the pain of the climb, it means that you're not climbing anything that's worthwhile. When you climb... The pain will be present. But here's what you do. In the midst of that pain, you realize that you've done the preparation in order to finish what you started. Let's flip that coin. The higher you climb, the sweeter the satisfaction. The higher you climb, the greater the view. So here's a question you have to ask yourself. I'm not preaching at you. I'm just asking you questions this morning. Are you okay with that? 
So ask yourself this, not your neighbor, you. Ask yourself this. Am I climbing or am I coasting? Am I climbing or am I coasting? Because you cannot climb and coast at the same time. If you're not climbing, you are coasting. And if you're not coasting, you are climbing. Can I tell you what coasting is? Coasting means to travel with no effort. That's what it means. The longer you coast, the higher the likelihood of finding yourself at the bottom of the hill. See, because eventually the grade is going to end. And the grade always ends at the bottom. And if you want to get out of there where you are because you've coasted, how many of you know you, if you stay there, you stay always the same, you're going to have to start climbing. Why? Because you've got to go up in order to go down. The longer you coast, the more difficult it is to start to climb again. The longer you've been at a certain level of responses, a certain level of living, the more difficult it is to start again. Because we really, there's something about human nature that we don't want to go back to the beginning. How many of you ever played Monopoly? How many of you hate that landed on go back to the beginning? Or do not pass the beginning. Do not collect $200. Right? You go directly. You, you, you go, we, we, we don't want that. But some of us are going to have to understand we are going to have to allow the Holy Spirit to give us a completely new mindset in order to climb into that which God has for us. See, some of you are what we call are in a rut. How many of you know what a rut is? A rut is a grave with both ends dug out. Why? Because you're just doing this. Huh, 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 huh. Forward back, forward back, forward back, forward back. You're not getting anywhere, but you're stuck in a rut. And some of you are stuck in a rut in many arenas of your life. And the only way you can get out of it is to be willing to follow Jesus up the hill. You've got to follow him. And you've got to understand, you've got to get deeply rooted. So you have to do some preparation. So I'm going to just give you two simple thoughts for preparation real quick. Are you ready? Before you start climbing, before you're saying, woohoo, glory, hallelujah, I'm, I'm all charged up, you know, I'm going to, you know, chase down hell with a water pistol. I mean, I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> before you start climbing, I believe one thing is very, very crucial. You must review your past. You must review your past. Jeremiah 17, 5 to 8 says, this is what the Lord says. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So what do you do? You ask yourself, where have I been? Where have I been? If I'm honest, and this, this takes courageous attitude. To be able to look at your life from an honest, objective point of view. And, and, and why is it difficult? Because you're involved. How many of you know when you're involved, you're subjective. You're not objective. But ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And, and if you struggle, ask someone that, that loves you to ask you the tough questions. And don't get mad at them when they ask you the tough questions. Really reflect, where have I been? And if I keep on living my life the way that I've lived it, how much more am I going to grow into being like Jesus? Because remember, we're asking this from the point of view of being a Christ follower. I'm not talking about you building your business or anything like that. And that, this all can apply there. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about us growing in the image and likeness of Christ. Having His character, His nature. Where have I been? Why is this important? Because here's what we know the Word of God explains to us here in Jeremiah. My present condition is a reflection of where I've placed my roots in the past. 
The reason I am where I am is because of the decisions that I've made. Now I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know it's everybody else's fault. Come on now. We live in a society where we don't take any responsibility. I am what I am because somebody made me. Well, maybe when you are 10, maybe when you are 12, but there comes a point in your life where you start making decisions for yourself. And now you find yourself in places where you've made the decisions to be, not somebody else forced you to be. You can blame everybody else. You can blame a system. You can blame people. You can blame whatever. But your present condition is a reflection of where you have placed your roots in the past. Let me say this one thing as well. My present position is an indication of who I am relying on for my future. So whatever you position yourself in, you are showing who you're relying on. Because Jeremiah tells us very clearly, he says that, hey, if you trust men and you put your reliance on mere human, even your own human strength, and you've turned your heart away from the Lord, he says you're like a stunted shrub in the desert. I mean, you're not even a a shrub, a great shrub. You're a stunted one. Are you with me? And then he makes this statement, with no hope for the future. If you trust mere human strength, you don't have a future. You don't have the future that God wants. Why? Because the Bible tells you they were living in a barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land. He cannot paint a more stark picture of something that is no life, there's no joy, there's no happiness, there's no movement forward. Why? Because you are stunted and you've made decisions. Why? Because in who you've trusted, who you believed, whether that belief is even yourself instead of believing what God says. Because when you take the opposite side of the coin, when you trust the Lord, there's not only hope and confidence, but you have a future and you like a tree that is planted by the river bank with roots that reach deep into the water and, and you are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Meaning, meaning what? Meaning that it doesn't, it means that even if your environment around you changes from blessing to a curse, Even when the beautiful days of of spring and and summer is gone and you're now in the harsh days of winter and it's hard and it's cold and it's difficult or you're in the the heat of of the wilderness of the summer, he says you are not affected by it. Why? Because your roots are deep planted into the water. Why? Because you have decided that you are trusting Christ Jesus. And that changes everything. So you have to look at where you've been to know where you need to be going. So we're going to just check out a video. Now it's the time for the video. (laughs) Of where we have been as a church this last year. was an incredible year. From start to finish, we saw God move in our community. We kicked off the year strong with our Daniel Fast, where we pressed in and trusted God to equip us for the year ahead. We focused on the book of Philippians and received the joy of the Lord like never before. We were also blessed to hear the voices of several guest speakers early in the year who imparted to us wisdom from God's Word. EXO Conference in February was life-changing. Married couples from this church and the surrounding community had the opportunity to invest in their marriages, trusting God to make new, restore, and release them together, hand in hand, into His very best for them. Easter at the Rock was next level. From Palm Sunday to Good Friday to Easter Sunday, we got to celebrate our risen King with a triumphant shout of victory. We're so grateful for God's presence poured out in every service and for the lives that were given to Jesus as we honored Him for all that He has done for us. One of our favorite parts of Easter is that we get to host our annual Easter egg hunt. We were able to bless over 300 kids from the community. We gave away 5,000 Easter eggs, painted faces, did crafts, and most importantly, let this community know that Jesus loves them. 
On the first Thursday of May, we were honored to participate in the National Day of Prayer by hosting a prayer service. As a body, we lifted up the name of the Lord over our nation and believed for His will to be done. Every summer, we get a little crazy and do a little bit of everything for everyone. This year, we didn't just get crazy, we got salty. Be Salty was our Summer Rocks theme and was the driving vision for all that we put our hand to. Our goal was to be the salt and the light of Jesus in our church community and to our Temecula Valley. During Summer Rocks, Rock Youth pressed in, had fun, and grew closer to God. From summer nights to summer camp, Rock Youth truly made the most of each moment. In children's ministry, the invitation to Camp Rock was extended to our preschool age group this year. Our four-year-olds through fifth graders came every day for an entire week to learn all about what it means to love God and how to grow deeper in their relationship with Him. They played, worshiped, and made new friends and experienced the presence of God on a whole new level. In addition to putting on an amazing Camp Rock, Children's Ministry launched our first ever Kids Rock Block Party. Our kids were given an opportunity to invite their friends from school and learned how to be the salt and light for their community. 100 of you came out to give your time, and hundreds of families came out, jumped, played carnival games, had snow cones, and learned that the Rock Church, and most importantly, Jesus, loves them. Rock Women had a blast this summer. 170 women came out to the Rock Women Tea Party and lots more participated in our summer workshops. We gathered together, had fun, and took time to focus our hearts on Jesus and grow deeper in Him. The men also had fun this summer at the men's camping retreat. They headed out to Lake Hemet for a couple of days to build community and press into God's presence. Rocktoberfest is by far our biggest outreach of the year. It was held in person for the first time since 2019. We targeted 12 elementary schools in the Valley and you invited your friends, family, and neighbors. Overall, hundreds of families came out from all over the valley to experience the love of God and, of course, candy. We collected 2,000 pounds of candy and had over 100 volunteers in action. Many families who have never heard the gospel came to this event. This Christmas, we celebrated the birth of Jesus with beautiful Christmas Eve services and with one powerful celebration on Christmas Day. We also put our love in action like never before. 118 children received gifts from the Angels and Kisses program. 70 people signed up to bring a $50 gift card for Project Uplift, which equates to $3,500 to support families in need throughout the year. We collected 670 shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child. On top of all that, between May and December, we raised $117,523 to build the Rock Church South Africa. In addition to everything we did this year, 71 people were baptized, 400 kids attended our kids' night outs, and we averaged giving out 240 food boxes every week. That's about 624,000 pounds of food and drinks through our Love Active Outreach weekly food distribution. Rock Church, we had quite a year. God put his greatness on display in and through this community, and we are so grateful that we got to be a part of all that was accomplished. While 2022 was incredible, we know the best is yet to come. We are excited and expectant for all God has for us in 2023. Now you need to make a video of your life for the last 2022. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, it's good to review where we have been as a church. And it's good to know that uh, um, our faith and our trust is in the Lord. And it's as wonderful as 2022 was. And as grateful as we are, we know that there is more for us to do. And uh, we are excited about the future. And that's why... We want to get deeply rooted. 
We want to make sure that we are not a church that, that has a, a wonderful expression, but really do not help people to actually change their lives. And we know that the only thing that can help you and the only one that can, his name is Jesus. So we must review our past. And then one more thought today is we must reflect on our present. We must reflect on today, now. Listen to what Paul writes in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. And he says this, and now. Somebody say, and now. And now. Come on, say it again. So that, that's this moment. Just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must do what? You must do what? Come on, say it again. You must what? Continue to follow Him. So although you had a great start, you, don't, you celebrate that. But how many of you know there's more? You got to continue. And then he goes in verse 7 and says, Let your roots grow down into Him and let your lives be built on Him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. That is a picture of where we want to be as we grow, as we continue to follow Jesus. We want to let our roots go, roots go down into Him. We want our lives to be built on Him. And that will allow our faith to grow strong in what? In the truth that we were taught. If we are not being taught, then th there is no truth. If we, are, if we, are ju if we just sit and, and we don't take the truth that's being taught and we don't implement it and make sure that it, it, is, it, is, it is taken within our lives. How many of you know that you can stare at a plate of food and that's wonderful, but there's no value in staring at food. There's only value in eating food. Have you ever looked at pictures of food and, 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 and begin to salivate? How many of you, and especially when you're in a Daniel fast, <laughs> you see visions, you see arches, and it's not heaven's arches, it's a big M, or BK. How many of you know you get visions, and, but you, you stare at pictures, and, you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and, and here's the thing, you can stare at a picture all you want, you can desire all you want. But there's no value in, 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 in staring at it. There's only value in putting your fork in it and eating it. Because that's the only way your body will get the nutrition it needs in order for you to be healthy. And it's the same spiritual. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. If you don't engage, nothing that I say will help you. Nothing. I, I don't care. You can, you can resurrect the greatest preachers that ever lived on the planet, but the, their words will have no effect until you engage in it. Your car will not move forward until you put it in gear. And you've got to engage. You've got, you've got to take what you're being taught. You've got, to, you've got to use it and you've got to apply it in your life. When you hear a truth, it, it, it might hurt at first because we know that truth in its first appearance sometimes is negative, but it helps us. Why? Because it chafes away and shaves away that very things that are not like Christ. And this is the place where we, mu we must have total honesty, transparency, and vulnerability here. The only way to get to this place of discovery is the questions that we ask ourselves. You have to put it out. you got to put it all on the table. You have to be real, meaning you must define reality and not suffer from happy talk. We all like happy talk because it makes us happy. But happy talk doesn't change lives. It only makes us feel good. How many of you know when you have a disease, you need healing and you need to take medicine? Somebody can come and, you know, jump in front of you and make you laugh and that's great, but you still need medicine. Entertainment is nice, but entertainment doesn't change you. So ask yourself these following questions. Are you still with me or did you leave the building? How am I doing today? How am I really doing? And then ask these questions. Am I rooted in Christ? Am I built on Christ? You say, well, Henry, how, how do I know? Well, you know because the first place of reference is Jesus. How do you know you build on Christ? The first, I know, I know we, you know, we, we make fun of this, what would Jesus do? But that is honestly, the first question you ask yourself if you're rooted in Christ is, what does the Word say about this? It, it makes decisions easy for me. 
Why? Because what does the word say? I'm going with the word. Yeah, but the world says this. Well, I don't care what the world says. The word tells me this. So I'm going with the word and not the world. Because Christ is the expression of the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. That's Christ Jesus. Am I built on Christ? That means the way I live my life, the way I handle everything in my life, how I treat others, how I view others, how I see others, including those who are against me, how I treat them, how I acknowledge others, all of those things has to do with my life being built on Christ. How I handle my finances, how I handle my marriage, all of it. Somebody say all of it. And then the real question is, if I'm doing that, because if you're truly built on Christ, here's one thing that Paul says in Colossians that will be an expression. You will be overflowing with thankfulness. Church, it is impossible to be built on Christ and complain all the time. I'm going to make some of you mad right now. You might not like the politics of the day. Okay, that's fine. But the reality is this, our job is to pray for those who are in authority. And you should pray as hard, if not harder, for the, our pr current president, Biden, as you prayed for Trump. As you prayed for Obama. Okay, can I have a, a week, at least some, somebody? Well, bless God. They are, doesn't, it's irrelevant of what they do. Of course it affects our lives, but we must bring them before God. Why? So that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. Are you with me? So, 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 that, so your, your first response cannot from a political point of view. You cannot live your life from politics. You cannot live your life from a natural identity. You now live your life from a Christ-like identity. Why? Because your life is hidden with Christ in God. Because your first reference is not that I am a man, or I am a woman, or I am a white guy, or I am a black guy. No. I am a Christ follower. That's my first reference. That's my first reference. Everything else becomes secondary. And if anything else is in the way of the image of Christ, I will not make it an idolatrous thing. That means I will not raise it above Christ. Be very careful that we don't take certain identities and raise it to idolatry. Am I overflowing? Are you okay out there? With thankfulness. We, we're just doing a little review here. Yeah. We're just asking questions. I'm not even preaching at all. <laughs> and then ask this question. Once you look real honestly, where do I need to grow? Evaluate it. Look at it. Where do I need to grow? Listen, listen, listen. Can I, something you must remove from your life. Stop justifying things that's not right. Stop saying, well, you know, I'm okay with this. Well, is God okay with it? That's the, that's the real question, not are you okay with it. I'm okay with a lot of stuff I shouldn't be okay with. How about you? Anybody else like me? Yeah. Two. <laughs> let, me, let, let, me just, let me just, when I say where do I need to grow, don't confuse this question with where do I need to go. Yeah. <laughs> that's part of the problem. If you ask the question, where do I need to go? You are focused on a place to arrive at. Now, that's not all bad because we do need a picture of where we want to go to. The difference is when you are focused on a destination more than a process, you eventually stop growing. The problem with some of us is that we make growing a destination instead of understanding that it is a process and a continual one. You'll never arrive on this side of eternity. So what do you need to do? You need to give yourself regular checkups. That's why I love this time of year. What, what, why? You say, Henry, why? Because you need evidence for growth. 
How many of you know growth is evident? Let's take natural growth. If you have a child or you had a child, that child was a baby. The child didn't stay a baby. As a matter of fact, you were a baby. Some of you are still acting like babies, but anyway. But you know a child is healthy as that child is growing. The child grows emotionally. The child grows physically. You can see it. It's not an abstract thing. You don't have to pray or discern that the child is growing. You can know. Somebody say, I can know. And can I tell you something? You can know that you are growing spiritually. It is observable. Growth is not a promise. It is a reality that you say, how do I know? It is reflected in your lifestyle. Growth can be seen. We have some fruit trees in our backyard that we planted, I don't know, probably about four years ago or so, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, what you can see about these trees, for a few years, they didn't produce fruit but our grapefruit tree, it's a little bitty grapefruit tree. It's not a very big tree. But, I mean, it's got these massive grapefruits on it. And it's got, a, I mean, just a bunch of them. I mean, I've been praying over it that it get, you know, ripe, ripe and ripe and ripe and ripe and ripe. But it's, it's not ready yet. But I'm excited because I can already taste my own grapefruit from my own tree in my backyard. I love it. But I have seen over the last several years the progression of this tree from just a little bit seedling to where it is now, and now I can actually see the fruit on it. It is observable. The trunk is thicker. The trees are taller, and they are bearing more and more fruit. So how about your growth? Say, Henny, how do I tell? Well, let me ask you, is your trunk thicker? I'm only kidding, it's not. (laughs) Somebody say, hey, hey, I'm a giant in the Lord, hallelujah. (laughs) Ask yourself like this, are you more committed than before, or are you trying to make excuses not to be as committed as you need to be? Let's ask another question. I won't even look at you, I'll just look down online. (laughs) How are your responses in in comparison to the way you responded in the past? Because you know how you responded in the past, so how are you responding now when you have the same irritation? How's your response? Let's ask another question. How's your prayer life? How's your prayer life? How's your word life? Can you point to some specific changes that you have made? Specific, not, well, let me see where I've changed. You you immediately know, and people around you, they know as well. How many of you understand, in measuring something, we we will have to ask questions. Why do we ask questions? Because it helps us to discover. Now, we might not like the questions, but we need the questions. I can go on, but I think you get the point. Lamentation 3, 4 says this, and I'll finish. It says, instead, let us test and examine our ways and let us turn back to the Lord. What a way to start the new year. Let us test and examine our ways. Paul writes and he says, test yourself to make sure you are in the faith. So I come to you today as, as, as just as humbly as I can, but as honest as I need to be to help us. I don't want to be at the same place I am today a year from now. And when I say place, I don't mean a physical location. I, I, I mean a spiritual location. I don't want to live on Christian cliches. Are you with me? I want to live from the Word of God. I want to discover more deeper who Jesus is. I want to know Him more intimately. 
I want to love him more deeply and I want to change where I need to change so that it can be reflected. Not so that I get praise or a pat on the back, but so that I can become like him because I want to take the climb. I want to go higher. I want to go further. I want to go deeper. And, 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 and I want to take people with me because it makes it more fun when we climb together. But here's the thing that I cannot do. I can try to motivate you, but I cannot give you passion. I cannot. Nobody can. As a matter of fact, let me make a statement. Nobody can make you do that which you have decided not to do. Because if I guilt you in doing something, you probably at the most will last a month. At the most. But the moment the guilt lays off, we go back to the automatic pilot that's set in our lives. I don't know about you, I want to break the automatic pilot of my life by renewing my mind to what God says so I can become the man that God wants me to be, the man that my wife needs me to be, the man that my children deserves me to be, and the Mufasa that my grandbabies plural, <laughs> needs me to be. Where you at? Where you at? I can yell at you every week, and I do. <laughs> I have a good time yelling at you. Some of you show up, some of you don't. But I cannot make you grow. People say, well, Pastor, you're not deep enough. Well, probably. But you know what I found? You can't go deeper than Jesus. For me, Jesus in the beginning, Jesus in the middle, Jesus in the end. Anything deeper than that leads to confusion. I'm sticking with Jesus. I don't know who you're sticking with. I'm sticking with Jesus. I'm not sticking with culture. I'm sticking with Jesus. Yeah, but everybody says, okay, I don't care. Jesus says it's not okay. Well, you know what? You know what they did? I mean, it's wrong. They shouldn't treat people like that. I know, but I'm sticking with Jesus. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Bless and do not curse. Hola. <laughs> we got a long way to grow, baby. Let's grow this year. Let's get our roots into the ground. The ground of God's word and the ground of the person of Christ. Let's bow our heads. If you're here today and you have not made a commitment to Christ, you need to do that. You need to do that. If that's you and you say, Henny, that's me, would you pray for me? Would you just pop your hand up and let me see it? Thank you, 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 thank you. Back there, I see it, thank you. You can put it down, back there, I see it. Thank you, back there, over there, thank you. Thank you, I see that, I see that, thank you. Thank you, thank you, I see that. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I'm going to pray with you right now to invite Christ into your life. Because the key is Him in you. Christ in you. So would you pray with me? Everybody pray together. Say, Jesus, I want to be your apprentice. I want to be your disciple. I want to be taught by you today I admit I'm a sinner in need of a savior and you are the savior of the world because God gave you as a sacrifice for my sin Jesus thank you that you died in my place 
on the cross. Shed your blood so I can be forgiven. I receive your forgiveness. I repent. I turn around and go your way. Help me. Take my old heart and give me a new one so that I may follow you all the days of my life. I acknowledge Jesus Christ is, is my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my God. I trust in you for my salvation, not in my own works, but in your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and teaching me how to follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to take one more, mo one more moment and pray for all of us. Would you just pray with me and I'll pray. And if you're in agreement with it, which you should be, let's pray together. Lord, here we are, your church. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your goodness and your grace and your loving kindness towards us who believe. We sit here this morning in humble adoration of who you are, but also in complete dependence. Thank you for what you've done in 2022. We are so grateful. We are so grateful how you've used so many people to do and help and set free and serve. We pray that you would give us insight for the future. We don't want to stay the same. Where we are today, we want to move beyond this point. Help us so that this year we may be deeply rooted in your love and in your grace. We may be deeply rooted in the person of Christ. Lord, help us to ask ourselves the tough questions. And help us not to be so oversensitive and get mad and angry when we are not where we're supposed to be. But help us to give it up to you and submit our lives completely into your care. We thank you for that now. We are hungry for a move of God at the Rock Church. And we pray for a move of God at every church in this valley. And we pray for a move of God in every church that names the name of Jesus all over the world. Let your kingdom come in us and through us. And let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and amen. If you believe that, give the Lord a clap offering that He is worthy of today.